Hey there, and welcome to The Knit Show. I'm Vicki Howell. Today, we are going to get festive with fiber, and we are gonna focus on the handmade holidays. So, mostly the winter holidays, but really all of them, because we as makers love giving our handmade stuff as gifts. So, we have got my friend, Susan B. Anderson, who is here, designer, of course. She's gonna be showing us how to make this great hat that you can gift to really anybody. Then we're gonna take a little quick trip to my personal favorite local yarn store, Hill Country Weavers. Then I've got my buddy, Heather Woolpool, who's going to be here with her UU yarn stocking. So we've got loads of stuff, I'm super excited. Oh wait, we also will have gift items for you later because you know we got you. But first, I would love to meet today's Knit Hive. Hello everyone. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Dr. Pratt. Adriana, yes. it's so good to have you here. <laughs> Thank have you for you been having me. Knitting for a long time, or? I started knitting about 10 years ago. Um, I'm originally from Mexico City, and I um, had a little uh, time when I had to stay home. I was a newlywed, and so I thought, what a great way to you know, pick up a new craft and started knitting then, uh, actually watching your show, Nitty Gritty. Oh, that's and so lovely. And been knitting since then. So now it's, um, I have two small children, and I have a, you know, busy at work, and so it's a great way for me to relax and wind down after a hard day at work. Um, so I, I love it. I really is, enjoy it. Is knitting as big in Mexico City as it is here, or Mexico as it is here in the States? I don't think so. I think it's become more popular in the past few years, maybe three to five years, um, but I didn't really know much about knitting until I moved to the U.S., so... I think it's also, it's still pretty new uh, there. Really, really. I'm gonna have to go there and make that make yeah. that change. <laughs> what are you working on? I am working on a cardigan. It's a Hue to Fute cardigan. It's a very popular pattern on uh, Ravelry. And it's a cardigan that is knit, it's seamless. So you knit a big rectangle, it's all a lace pattern. And then you make uh, seams for the underarms and then work on the rest of the body. So it's a very interesting, very unique shape. Uh, really enjoying it. It's lovely. It's yes. lovely. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Ruby. Hello. Hello. Nice having you here in your shawl. Thank I love a little you. that you're representing the knitwear. Do you, uh, have you started your holiday making? Uh, I started it right now. Um, <laughs> so just making a couple of pairs of socks for some family members. These will be for my little brother and that's so nice. So. And he'll get two socks. You'll actually make Yes, I will them. make two socks, you know. Good for you. I that that's a rarity in my life. <laughs> yes. I, I can't just give him the one sock. It could it's be a, a it could be a Christmas stocking. It but, could, and yeah. we're actually gonna address that very thing later with Heather, for sure. Well, thank you for being here. Absolutely. So my dear, ugh. I'm gonna just get a little closer to you. Carol, how, um, you're actually local to Austin. How, how long have you been knitting? Well, uh, just two or three years. I started uh, taking a beginner's class at uh, Hill Country Weavers mm -hmm. and then got into, uh, I take a Tuesday evening group. And I think for me, that's what's kept me knitting because obviously I, as a beginner, I run into problems, but mm -hmm. the group has been so good about helpful ideas, uh, solutions, helping me everything from choosing a pattern to selecting the yarn. So I think going there, a lot of it is the socializing, but it's also the, the great community that you get there, the, the feeling of support and encouragement. And um, as someone who's retired, I wanted to do something that was creative and fun. And this has really and been- get you out there. Yeah, exactly. and the holidays really are about the people that you spend time with. And for me, mm -hmm. the community that crafting has afforded me is absolutely one of the best things oh, in my life. Definitely, for sure. Definitely. All right, well, I'm gonna leave you all here to do a little knitting, if you don't mind hanging out knitting in my little loft space while we go and meet our first guest. Cool? Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. My first guest in the studio today is designer, author, blogger, the beloved Susan B. Anderson, who is also <laughs> co-owner of Barrett Wool Co. I'm so thrilled to have you here. Thanks for having me, Vicki. The, so this is obviously, we're talking about holidays and handmade today, and I wanna to dive into the project, but what I really love is, I love that you started this wool company with your son. My sons are working on this show, <laughs> um, and I would love for you to just talk a, a little bit about how that came to be. Sure, several years ago, my son graduated with a business degree, and we were talking about different things that we could do, and he really wanted to do kind of a small startup business, and so we just started, brainstorming and sourcing things and just the excitement started to build. And then we opened up Barrett Wilco just six or seven months ago. As a now. mom of boys, I just like, 
I love it. I it's love it really so much. Fun. And your stuff is beautiful. It's Thank go-to you. urine for sure. We're actually going to be working with it today. And we're making a project that is great kind of for anyone on your holiday list. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. What we're going to do today is I um, came up with a really fun hat that has a interesting stitch texture and I have it in an adult size and a baby size. Perfect. Well, why don't we dive right in? We're going to really in. focus on the stitch pattern that, that really makes it kind of head turning. Yeah, it has a little interesting stitch to All right. it. Okay, so what I did is I started out with just casting on. Uh, I get a lot of questions about how to join to work in the round and I really don't do anything fancy um, to do that. What I do though is I always make a butterfly with my end because it's a very common occurrence to knit with your tail. Knit with yeah. your tail. So I make That's a quick smart. butterfly and then I'm going to go ahead and join to work in the round. Um, and all I do is I make sure my stitches aren't twisted anywhere around this whole um, circular needle because once that's twisted, you can't get There's it no out. There's no turning back. There's yep. no turning back. So you, I simply just join by starting uh, knitting or working that first stitch, however you're going to work that. Um, this particular pattern has a twisted rib, so I'm going to show you quickly how to do a twisted rib. It's a one by one twisted rib, and so what you're going to do is knit through the back of that loop. So normally you'd knit through the front, and for the twisted rib, you knit through the back, and then you just purl that next stitch. And you'll notice that Susan is knitting continental. You do you. However, whatever method you use yeah. to knit, Totally cool. Makes all right, no so difference. after you've done the ribbing all the way around, you'll get a piece that looks like this little number. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna show you now is this kind of the setup round for um, this fun little stitch texture here. So the setup round is really pretty simple. You're going to knit four stitches, however you knit. And then what you do is you knit two together and then you're going to slip one and knit one, and then you pass that slip stitch over and off the right needle. And that's the repeat, it's eight stitches. So you're gonna knit four, and then do that same thing again. You're gonna knit two together, slip one, knit one, and then pass that slipped stitch over. And you just keep so repeating that So you're doing a little bit around. of decreasing here. You are. So the stitch count will vary okay. in this hat, but it always evens out so in the don't count, So don't count your <laughs> stitches at the end of this round because they'll be all off, Yeah, right? don't, okay. don't worry about that. Right. It'll, it'll even out. Okay, so now we're going to do this kind of fun uh, stitch, and it's called the long stitch. And you're bringing these, you're knitting down a couple rows, and you're pulling up the yarn to make these are long like stitches. Are they like spikes? Sort of, yes. So what you're gonna do is knit four, and then what you're going to do, oops, I think I'm one off there, is you're gonna find that spot two rows down where you did that decrease. And one easy way to find that is to look for kind of this stip, stitch that you passed over. And you're gonna go in between the knit two together and that slip stitch passed over and insert the needle and you're going to knit that just like you would knit a regular stitch, but you're pulling the strand up, the loop up on that right needle. And it's called the long stitch, so that makes sense. So you're gonna knit two, and then you go back into that same hole again, and now it's kind of pronounced. So you go ahead and knit right through that same hole again. So you have these two kind of funny long stitches yeah. and then the two and stitches And it creates in that between. hole too, which mm -hmm. is giving it that kind of eyelet effect. Yeah, it's really pretty. Okay, okay perfect. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to continue that in that stitch pattern mm -hmm. until you have to start the decreasing. Correct. All right, so I'm going to show you quickly how to uh, get your stitches onto your double pointed needles. All right, so for this round on here, I started right where I'm going to start my decrease round. Um, you use double pointed needles when you don't have enough stitches uh, mm -hmm. to go around the circular needles comfortably. So here I have, I'm gonna do a knit six and then a knit two And together. this is sometimes people get a little nervous about this part. Very but, much so. Yeah. You could also technically do the magic loop for people that are terrified of DPNs, but I prefer DPNs, I really like them. I like them too, but either way works fine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, and then you just knit two together. And oh, so then, you're staying in stitch pattern and transferring. I'm doing a decrease round. 
here, right okay. here. But then the next thing you do is just pick up and work on with the next Okay, perfect, needle. perfect. Okay, well, I can't have you on the show without talking about what you're really known for, which are your adorable little animals. Oh, so I'm good. gonna kind of pull some of those in and maybe you can tell us a little bit about sure, these guys. are so I'd cute. Because these are also great <laughs> gift items for office mates, for the little ones in your life. Mm -hmm. What, I don't think I've ever asked you, what what is it has drawn you to making these little creatures? I just love little things, little cute things. And uh, and I love creating 3D kind of knit sculptures. It's just kind of a, a thing I have a knack for. They're so <laughs> so cute. I just really enjoy it. Um, okay, so these are just a few patterns. Um, I have the sheep pattern. This one's really fun. And I've really been trying to knit uh, seamless toys recently. So they're all, all of these are seamless. You don't have to sew any little parts together while That's you're working amazing. on them. Yeah. So this is the sheep pattern. It has some texture. I did this one for Taproot Magazine and it's called Three French Hens. It's also on Ravelry, but it was a woven theme. So um, I tried to do a little woven color work there. And then this one was in the Making Magazine, which so is, um, yeah, really fun. And the, the theme for that was dots. So I threw in a little dotted stitch They're pattern. adorable. Everything that you do is so cute Thanks. and so great. And we will have links to where you can find all of these patterns. Plus we'll have the download for this actual hat so you can make it for everyone you know and link to your yarn on theknitshow.com. Thank you so much Thanks, for being Vicky. here, Susan. <laughs> Next up, we are gonna take a trip to my local yarn store, Hill Country Weavers. I'm headed to my favorite local yarn shop here in Austin, Texas, where I live. Um, it's called Hill Country Weavers and I've spent countless hours and loads of cash um, there. It's meant a lot to me, like with any local yarn store, it really is more than a retail destination. It is sort of at the heart of the craft community that I love so much. I've lived in Austin about 14 years. I, I moved from LA and especially in, in those beginning years, knitting kept me company when I didn't know anybody and I could always go down um, and count on Suzanne to be there with just great advice and a big smile on her face and loads and loads of yarn. So I'm excited to show it off for you. Suzanne, this space, Hill Country Weavers, has meant a ton to me, you know that. When I very first moved here from LA, didn't know anybody, I had knitting, and I'd come in with my little boys that are now teenagers. You didn't bat an eye with them, you know, as I was like, Tanner, please get off the yarn, please get off the yarn. <laughs> um, but it was a touchstone for me. And what I really admire, one of the many things I admire about you is that you've always made the space feel like a home as part of the community. And I wondered if you would um, talk a little bit about during this time where yarn stores, you know, maybe are struggling a little bit. You see a lot that are, I see lists when I do, when I travel of stores that have been shut down. And you've been around for what, 30, 30 36 years? 36 years. 36 years mm -hmm. and are thriving. Mm -hmm. Will you share a little bit of that magic with us? Well, you know, I, I don't know what the magic formula is, but, uh, you know, I just open the door every day and I welcome whoever comes in and it's exciting. And I, uh, I try to stay up with the trends and stay in tune with what people are asking for and wanting. And the industry has changed over those 36 years dramatically. I mean, there's been the eyelash trend, there's been all, and now we're in this hand dye trend. And so as long as, is I stay involved in it and stay current, I feel like it, it gives me that edge. Well, I'm super excited to show off your beautiful space. Are you ready for a little tour? I am, I am. About six years ago, we were lucky enough to become a flagship store for Brooklyn Tweed. And he was one of the first, what I would say, cottage industries that kind of flared up and, and he had a strong, brand that he had gotten uh, through blogging. And people really loved his stuff, loved his photographs, and he started a yarn line. And we were lucky enough to be one of the flagship stores. The hand dyeing trend has been very popular for several years now. And 
we're seeing lots of those yarns coming our way. So we decided to take it a little bit different direction and we came up with HCW Naturally. So we're looking, we went out and looked for fibers that were unique, but in their own way, in their own color, in their own skin, so to speak. So we've got yak, we've got silk, we've got merino wool, we're, we're gonna get mohair, we're gonna get cotton, we're gonna really expand this line, but it's all about just the natural. This is a specially favorite yarn of ours. This is one of our local dyers and everybody always wants to see what's in the community that's special to us. And this is Yarn Carnival. And she happens to be one of our teachers as well. And she does just really beautiful, beautiful fibers. And uh, she does the, the, the very tonals, the very variegated, and then the very fun ones as well. She, it's nothing she can't do. We'll, we'll present her with a problem and she's instantly there. We recently had uh, a guest come in and teach a class and so she provided us with an exclusive colorway just for this class, which was just over the top for her. All right, we've shown everybody your gorgeous physical space. Now let's talk virtual space. Well, that's the thing I'm most excited about. In the last few years, we've paid a lot more attention to our online presence, and we're trying to make it as beautiful as our walk-in presence. And I have a woman that works for me, Kennedy Berry, and she has the best vision. Well, wonderful. Well, um, I say that we go talk to Kennedy now. Kennedy, tell us why it was so important to you to create a e-commerce portion of the business. Well, you know, I was so lucky. Hill Country Weavers was my local yarn store before I started working here. And not everybody's lucky enough to have that. Um, I know there's a lot of places where maybe you don't have a local yarn store. You don't have access to all of the colors and the fibers and some of this incredible stuff. And so we wanted to create an online presence where it was like walking into this yarn store. So we've focused a lot on putting the samples up and um, making patterns that inspire people, things that um, people will be able to come to the website and get the experience of coming to Hill Country Weavers without having to actually be here. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for letting us come and invade your beautiful store. You know that I love being here. Well, we love having you, you know that. <laughs> All right, we are back here in the studio. We have some more gifty goodness for you. I am here with my friend, Heather Woolpole. She is the owner of UU Yarn. It is so good to have you here. Thank you, Vicki. And we are gonna be working on kind of a two for a project today. Yep. So we have got, you've brought us this adorable holiday stocking pattern. Yep. That is also, what? A sock pattern. That's right. And you're gonna tell us how without changing really much of anything at all, you can make either one, whatever makes your whole heart happy. Yeah, all you need to change is the yarn weight and the needle size. You make the Christmas stocking with our Baba Bulky yarn, and it makes that big, generous thing, add a pom-pom, and that's a holiday stocking. That is a holiday. And yep. then uh, to make them for yourself, you use smaller needles and our thinner yarn called Wooly Worsted. Yeah, so you don't have to do anything different. Same exact pattern, yep. um, and then you just go for it. So I would love to just dive right in and show okay. people how to make this great sock. That sounds good. So as you can see, we have a ton of color work we're going on, which is what makes the socks so cute. So I'm gonna show you here how to get started with the first color right here on line two of the chart. And what we do here is, I like to work color work with one color in my right hand and the other color in my left hand. And we get started with one stitch of the uh, of the indigo. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. And then uh, another stitch in the lavender. So as you can see, we have one of the contrasting color and three of the main color. And the colors that are in this chart are different than what she's working from. So you just will say main and, and contrast. Right, we have four colors. So we have A, B, C, and D. And right now I'm working back and forth with colors A and B. Are you just carrying that across the back? Yes. Uh, so I just, as you can see, a nice tiny little float right there, and you keep that loose to um, 
So it doesn't pull, like, exactly. so it doesn't like bunch it. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly and so this right. is just a four stitch repeat. So this chart, you just keep repeating again and again and again. Yep. All right. So you would do that all the way around. Yep. And then what's next? Uh, next, this I'm going to show you. I, I have three colors going on, but that's okay. We, um, we work. Well, I'm gonna leave, the vanilla is my color D, where it's showing brown here. So okay. we're getting started right here on row 12. Okay. And I'm using color C along with color A. And so I'm gonna put A in my right hand and get started right here with color D. And I like to tuck the color into the, pa into the back of the sock and tug it down a little, so that way I have enough uh, yarn to weave in the ends when we're done. So I get started with one stitch of that. Oh, sorry. So you're just, just using the, the color fiddly. that you're not using, you're letting it just kind of hang out? Yes, because I'm going to get back to it right here the next on round. the next and So you can just row. carry it up to the back. And again, that's something you do. You carry it loosely, just like I did that other float. Um, so we just float that yarn loosely behind and work along with our main color. And you would just do that all the way. Yeah. yeah. So you just repeat. It's a four stitch chart and you just keep repeating all the way around those four stitches and you, you, you get build, this great look. You build yeah. the colors as we go. Yeah, absolutely. And so you have another piece that um, in another great colorway in our show colors. <gasps> yeah, what? I made that just That's for you. So pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, so this is obviously a big leap, but it's the same exact te technique that she just showed you all the way up the leg. Right. And then you've also worked the heel. That's plain old ribbing. It'll be in the pattern on the knitshow.com. Yep. Um, but what you're going to show is what some people, freaks some people <laughs> out, is the heel turning. Right. Yeah. It's called turning the heel, but it is not as complicated as it sounds. This is going to make the part that, like, cradles the bottom of your foot. And we're just doing basic stitches. The first stitch we slip and then we knit across and it says in the pattern you knit to the gap. And what you can see is that as we work these short rows back and forth, we get a little gap where we turn the work around. And you can see right there naturally a gap occurring in my work. And so I slip, slip, and knit across this gap to make a decrease. And then I knit one. And as the pattern says, now we turn. So we turn right back around and we're gonna purl on this to head back. So she's leaving the rest of those stitches unworked because she's working yep, a series of short rows. That's exactly which, right. As the name infers, means you're working not the long, the whole length of the row, right. just short portions. That's of exactly it. right. And as we look at this row before I get started on it, there's a gap naturally occurring right there. So I'm gonna purl across to here. I'm gonna purl these two together and then purl one extra stitch. What's great about that is there's a visual, visual cue for you. And I a know. lot of knitters are really visual people. And so even if you don't have the pattern, if you're not looking at it right then, you know, oh, here's my gap. This is where I need to yes. do my decrease. Exactly. So we just work right across here. And then we take across that gap, purl two together, purl one, and turn. And I'll show you, it's starting to make this it's a little, little heel thing. Nubbin. Yeah, heel nubbin. heel nubbin's perfect. <laughs> so that's the part that starts to turn the sock under your foot. And what you can see is what the short rows create is more fabric in that, in that one place where there won't be fabric over there. And that creates right. that little cupping of the foot. And so you just kind of lather, rinse, repeat until the end, whatever the pattern calls for until yeah. the stitches are all you worked. You just go all the way back and forth until all those are worked. Okay, and then from there, you're just gonna resume and you're gonna make the foot in the same way that the, that the uh, leg was made, the color work following the chart but then you need to finish it up, right? right? So let's talk about that. Okay. 
All right, the dreaded Kitchener stitch is about so, to happen. Yeah. So this is a seamless so way, or it looks seamless, it's not seamless. This is intended it's to make- grafting, right? It yeah. is called grafting. <laughs> it's supposed to look like your piece um, was not sewn together at all. So what it does is it mocks stockinette stitch. It creates yeah. the exact same loops. But every knitter everywhere forgets it at one time or right. another. It's, right, right. Like, it doesn't matter how it. many years. It's okay, so we, we have so it we've right got on you. the pattern. Yep. It'll be right there for you. And we're gonna show you now, so, so you'll really have yes. it. So the way we set it up is we had been on four needles, but we move it around, and this is all on the pattern. We have it set up now on just on two needles, and we have a front needle and a back needle. And this, we're gonna work down here toward this end, and we're going to insert pearl wise. Insert a darning needle, yep, pearl wise. Whoops, thanks. And we're gonna leave the stitch on the needle. And then we insert the darning needle on the back as a knit. Knit wise, right? Yeah. Exactly. So you're essentially knitting and purling, but without taking the stitch off um, the needles. And that just gets you, it anchors your yarn. Right. So now, oh, that's just the setup. So now we're going to work. Um, we have, we n do this first stitch as, as if to knit, and then we're gonna take it right off the needle here. Let it it's fall you off. scary, but it's <laughs> locked in there. That's good, it's <laughs> And then we have the second stitch, we work as if to purl. But you leave it on? I leave that one on you the leave needle. leave that one that's on. That's right. Okay. So now we move to the back needle and we do the opposite. We leave, we do the first stitch as if to purl and then let it fall take off. off the needle and snug this up a little bit and then we work the next stitch as if to knit but we leave it on. Great, and then you repeat the process. That's so right. let's see it, so let's we'll see it again. So. Okay, so as if to knit and we take it off. Oop, excuse me and as if to purl, but we leave it on. And then as if to purl, we take it off. And as if to knit, and we leave it on there. So we just work those four steps now, back and forth, it's a little loose at the moment. Cause yeah, because it'll tighten far up. away. Right, absolutely. But, but this is yes. this is what it's going to look like. Let me, I'm going to get this under. Yeah. So you can see. See you how can't it, tell that it wasn't. No, that all wasn't that seen. stuff is captured That's what we call right professional in there. knitting. Is what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. So this is this. I love this. All of the the patterns to make. Well, both of them because it's the same pattern. Yep. Links to you, you yarn and other good stuff. We have you have loads of patterns. I love yes. that you you like me like the simple aesthetic. So you've got yeah. a bunch of go-to stuff. We'll have links to that on the knitshow.com. These are great gifts both to wear and to and to decorate for our holidays. I really yeah. appreciate you being here and showing <laughs> oh, thank us. Thank you for having me. It was a ton of fun. And up next, we have even more holiday goodness for you. We have set up a whole table full of our favorite gifty things. <laughs> All right, so we've spent most of the episode talking about what we as knitters and crocheters can make for others, but now I have brought my dear friend and content producer for The Knit Show on with me, Karen Strom, and we're gonna talk about some gifts that you can all put on your own list. It's gifts that stitchers of all types will love, so should we dive right in? Of course. Okay. All right, so the first thing is a subscription box. There's a lot of companies out here. I really like this one called Yarn Crush. It comes in a fun little package, like a bright package that'll be fun to take out of the mailbox. Something different every month. You don't know what it's gonna be. This particular one is a hank of really beautiful artisanal yarn, hand dyed. It comes with two patterns. One knit and one crochet, Clever. so you don't have to worry about what they, you know, what kind of stitch they want, um, and the, enough yarn to make that pattern. And it also comes with something else fun. This particular one has an adult coloring book that's really cute. It's got all these great illustrations with stories in it, and I just think that would just bring a bright spot to any stitcher's life. And it's the gift that keeps on giving. It really does. It really does. So I think yarn bowls are a perfect gift for any kind of yarn person, right. knitters, crocheters, weavers. This one is by a local Austin potter, 
and it's just gorgeous. It is, and these are great just even to use as a display. I, I've started to collect them myself. I have this vision of a great pottery wall. Now, if you want to really treat yourself or ask Santa to treat you, how about some cashmere? Mm. So this is from a line out of New Zealand called Harney Hooley Designs, and it is silk. You have to feel this. It is silk and cashmere. It comes with enough, it's, it's a treat for sure, and it comes with enough yardage to make a gorgeous lace shawl, and this would just be an absolute, like just, this in a box would just be and a treat. And it feels like heaven. It really does. And kits, another really yeah. good gift. Um, you can either make it up yourself or give the gift. This particular one is from Backyard Industries and it comes with everything. It has the crochet hook, yarn, stuffing, everything. Everything that you need. To make these cute little They're so cactus, cute. cacti. Cacti. And look, we have a theme. We do. <laughs> cacti are the new owls for sure. I um, And this would be really great for teenagers too. I think a nice like younger yeah, would be. Yeah, because this is really basic, easy, yeah. learn to crochet. Yarn, I see yarn. Well, so I stopped at my, before I came out here, I stopped at my local yarn shop it, and she just has the most unique products. She spins her own yarn, has her own sheep, spins right. her own yarn. In Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, yeah. in Bangor, Pennsylvania. These are Teeswater locks, which you can spin in if you're a spinner. And if you're not, you can knit in to what you're working on. This is how it works up. Beautiful. And then she has other unique items there. Like this is such a beautiful hand carved crochet hook. It, what a great stocking stuff. Even just, or even just in like a silk box, like you open it, it's just such a showpiece. It right. would be lovely and really right. special. So let's talk stocking stuffers. We love little like notions and tidbits. My friend Bets White has this adorable pom-pom maker called the Llama Luma, which is adorable. <laughs> and it would be really cute. You could hang it as an ornament on a tree. You could stick it out of a stocking or put or it on put the top. Or put it on a gift. Absolutely, absolutely. Another really innovative thing is by Coco Knits. It is a stitch holder that has removable tips. It's on a leather cord so that you can just feed the stitches on, hold it like for a neckline or for you know a sweater or whatever, and then you don't have to worry about transferring the stitches, you just knit them right off. Brilliant. That is clever. Yeah, brilliant. Really clever. Knitting, vintage knitting needles made into various things. Yes. These are pens. Great to have when you're working on a pattern if you need to make sure. notes or make your Christmas list. Whatever. Really cute. That's I something think. I can see like passing out to like a whole knitting group or yeah. something. Yeah, like, or treat. like teacher gifts or yeah. something like that. Should we talk our big ticket items? Yeah. So on my list, I ha we have the this is from Knitters Pride, which is Knitters Pride in the U.S. and Canada, Knit Pro worldwide. Right. Um, interchangeable needle kit, deluxe their Royale line, which is wood with metal tips, seamless, uh, so smooth. Yeah. They have a special technique they use for polishing the wood. And then the uh, cords are in here. So you have everything in this cute little Paris themed box. So you don't get the trip to Paris, but you get the Paris needles. <laughs> it's still good. It's still right. a winning situation. And then, and then there's this fantasma. Pièce de résistance here. Yeah. It's a swift, same wood technique, mm -hmm. really beautiful, and ball winder. Yeah, and I don't know if any of you have the same plastic, like white plastic one that like flies off the table and click, click, click. Right, that you've had Every forever. Time, I get the biggest sailor mouth every time I use it. And this one just kind of spins like a dream. And it's kind of an art piece. You could keep this up in your studio. It's really right? gorgeous. And speaking of that wood, we're both wearing the same wood as jewelry. Check it out. They've decided to go into jewelry, because why not, using the exact same wood technique, which is super fun. Yeah. Whew. We have a lot of shopping to do. We do. All right, let's get let's started. Let's go. <laughs> All right, that does it for our Handmade Holiday episode. Thank you so much for being here. This is also the very last episode of our first season. It has been such a ride. I have been so thrilled to be here. The cast and the crew thanks you for watching. If you liked it, 
please share it. Sharing is caring. Uh, tag at Vicki Howell and also at The Knit Show with anything that you're working on from this entire show. We love seeing it. Tell a friend and then maybe we might be back for another season, right? And remember, anything that you saw over the entire season, downloadable patterns, links to our cool superstar experts, you know, goings on, all of it, we'll have at thenitshow.com. So be sure to visit it often. And until then, please make sure to chill out, take some time to be creative, and breathe in, knit out.